Radio One Podcast. Radio One Podcast. Download them for free at bbc.co.uk slash radio one. The Scott Mills Daily. Right, um, you know we've been doing breaking Britney Spears news, Mm -hmm. and then I stopped it. Because, to be honest, it was the same every day, wasn't it? You know, she walks naked in a changing room of a shop, sings Toxic to herself in a low voice. I would have loved to have heard that. You're toxic, I'm slipping under. <laughs> now, as a joke, we said, what should we replace uh, Breaking Britney Spears news with? And as a joke, we said, uh, Breaking Craig David news. <laughs> and all we could find is that he was spotted with a mystery woman, which is not that good, is it really? No. But then, last night, you found a story, a Craig David scoop, that the papers will actually want. A source of mine. Who... Hang on, I've got a jingle okay. first. Okay. Craig David. Hey, what's up? I'm Craig David. Breaking Craig David news on Radio 1. Yes? A source of mine revealed this mystery lady, how he wooed mystery her. Mystery lady. How he, how he persuaded her to go out with him. Okay. And he did it um, by sending round to her mum's house. She was with her mum at home. By sending round a singing... Umpa Lumpa telegram. Shut up. That is absolutely <laughs> That's true. how Craig David woos that the ladies. That is how Craig David woos the ladies, because he's obsessed with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So, one night in this uh, town in the northwest, which I won't say where it was, uh, they were sat at home and uh, answered the door, and there was a singing Umpa Lumpa telegram sent by Craig David to tell this girl how much he uh, wanted to go out with her. Right. And that is how to woo the ladies. Right, that is that is great. See, the papers will like that. I think See? that is an amazing. Gordon amazing Pillar story. will be onto that. Gordon Pillar will be straight onto that. Well, so like this girl. Let me let me just imagine I'm the girl for a second, okay? okay. So I'm just sat at home, mm-hmm. right, minding my own business, watching the telly. <laughs> watching Dynasty. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I wouldn't be watching that. <laughs> wouldn't you? No. I thought I, thought I would have had you down as a dynasty. I'd be man. watching this on Living. Thank you for being a friend. I'm watching the Golden Girls. Travel down the road and back again. <laughs> it's good that it's on every Sunday morning on Living. <laughs> Is it really? Oh my god. What? It's good. Seriously, it hasn't aged at all. <laughs> so I'm there watching the Golden Girls. Three runs. Uh. There, there goes the door. Oh, I'll open my big door. Can't get this one thing open. Has got a perfect puzzle for you. Oompa, 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 If you are wise, you'll listen to me. Rub and it. that is how it happened. <laughs> I'd shut the door at once and continue watching <laughs> the Golden <laughs> Girls. <laughs> Oh, it's good one, this. <laughs> she didn't. She agreed to go out with him. She went out with him? Yes. And that's, that's, that's how it's that's how. That's the way to a lady's heart. Radio 1 Podcast. Podcast. This is Radio 1. Right, it's uh, 6.09 and our guest this evening is Mr Paul McKenna. Hello. Hey, it's great to see you, Scott. You're Lovely right. to be here. Yeah, really fantastic, actually. Good to have you on. We were just discussing, um, you're like some kind of superhero to us. Oh, God, that's very kind of you. Because you can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Now, uh, now Chappers has got a bit of a problem at the moment. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe you could help with... What's the problem? Well, pain, is, mm. is, is that caused by something in your brain? It's it's actually caused because something hurts. Oh know? right, <laughs> well because I have ble- I have bleeding nipples at the moment, joggers nipple, and the joggers very, nipple, joggers yeah. nipple, and right they're very the sore. Yeah, and uh, and if you it sure was... you sure it's from that? You, no, it's part of positive. It's, it's not. It's nothing to do with clamps, <laughs> oh, chainmail vests, yeah. or anything like that. Do you know, I'm Purely glad we from cleared London. that up. Yeah. 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 Well, I didn't want to put you off straight away. No. But is the pain from them, is that some kind of thing going on in my brain, or is it well, just because of scabby and ultimately, bleeding? Ultimately, <laughs> ultimately it, it ends up, it's a signal from your body mm. saying that it's hurting, that ends up as a message in your brain. And uh, you can use techniques to switch pain off. In fact, you know, any sports person or you know, people in the military learn to override pain as, as part of so the So you job. could isolate my nipples from I, the rest I, of my body. I, I could do a, a nipple desensitisation, yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Wow. 
Obviously, you two be having a private session on that one. Uh, yeah. um, it's just, what, what, I hope that last sentence doesn't come back to haunt you. Yeah, nipple desensitisation. <laughs> yeah. It'd be a good name for a band, wouldn't it? <laughs> also, Paul, I've got mice in my house at the moment. Yes. Now, is that something you could do? Do you know, I can get rid of your mice by Paul McKenna. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's another blockbuster, isn't it? Yeah. It's a great book. I, I don't know why I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> no, okay. no, I don't know anything about mice. Okay, I'll just put some traps down then. It's all yeah, fine. It's probably best. Uh, you've, um, <laughs> you've kind of moved away from all the stage stuff now, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. I haven't from, for a few years. Uh, got anyone to dance like a ballerina or oh, that was or, funny though. i know they were very good fun i used to love doing those shows yeah. although um i did a few years ago i hypnotized richard hammond to forget how to drive a car and then we got him <laughs> to review this car and he goes you know, he's standing there he goes so let's look at the new alfa romeo and he jumps in and he's looking confused and he starts he starts pushing the cigarette light <laughs> i'm sure this button starts it and i'm pointing at the steering wheel i said what does that do and he goes it does something. I'm not sure what it is. You know, Jeremy Clarkson's crying with laughter. It's on YouTube. Yeah. If you if you put Richard Hammond hypnotised into YouTube, you'll find it. That's good. What we could do maybe is combine the two. I can change your life by making you dance like a chicken. That'd yeah, be it'd be a good. I suppose a good mm. combination. Yeah, sort of a comedy way to change. Mm. So I mean, is it is that stuff a bit old hat now? Well, I suppose it's not. I mean, it'll always be. Um, something that people want to see is people making fools of themselves and letting their hair down that's what karaoke is but now that's, you do think of this don't you look into my eyes look into my eyes the eyes look around the eyes don't look around the eyes look into my eyes you're under, i have not been taking your underwear home putting it on in my bedroom and then parading up and down in front of the mirror going Ooh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you know i got to tell you a funny story because i get that everywhere yeah i bet that, thanks thanks to those <laughs> Sorry, two no no i don't mind but the it was a few months ago i was driving long and so it was a sunday morning there was no traffic about and the lights were amber and i shouldn't have done this but there was no traffic around so i, I went through an amber light anyway <gasps> two seconds later whoo, from nowhere so i pulled over i you know hearts racing a bit mm. I think i'm busted i get out two policemen get out put on their hats one of them goes oh look who it is <laughs> and i thought i might be all right here he goes look into my eyes look in my eyes don't look around the eyes the other the other policeman's laughing so hard he's having to lean against the police car and with that the, the, the one who was going looking at my eyes starts clucking like a chicken he goes i'll have to let him off i'll have to let him off and they were dying of laughter i thought i might get away with this they went now you know what you did i said yes i do officer they went go on off you go and that was it oh, so you got off. That's i know good. so it ca came in handy that's really good now um, i want to talk to you about a time when we we had a dog in in the studio and chappers got hypnotized by this dog didn't you oh what a no well you hypnotized it it was called. Have you heard of Hypno Dog? It was supposed yes, to hypnotize. I, I, I it, know. It's, it's yeah. It's a it's a hypnotist. Yeah. yeah. Hypnotizes you and then with, hypnotizes you. When the dog looks at you, you go into a trance. Yeah. yeah it didn't work. Yeah. yeah it didn't work. The dog fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, um, we, we did regression. Yeah. Uh, a while back. Yeah. Can I just ask? It was a bit strange. Yeah. Yeah. Why does everyone always think that they were Joan of Arc or Mary Queen of Scots? Yeah. Or, or why it, are they never a fish or, or a dinner lady or something? Mm, it, it, you're always no, William no. the Conqueror. I, I, I know. Do you know? It, it's one of those things. That I've seen it done a lot of times, and I have to say, most of the time, I thought nonsense, nonsense. But sometimes people come out with all sorts of bizarre historical facts that there's not a logical explanation for. They can suddenly speak in a foreign language they can't normally speak. Really? But, I, you know, what I find more interesting is future progression, where you take somebody into an imagined future. You ask their mind to compute. If I carry on on this course, where will I end up when I'm 50? Or, if you believe in such things, you know, where would I end up in a future life if you, you, know, if you believe in reincarnation? And that is really interesting. So it sort of gives you a snapshot of your karma, if you like. God, that would scare the life out of me. I wouldn't like that. God. <laughs> knowing what was going to happen in the future. No, God, like that would be horrible. You'd look like David Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Is that why you're scared of that? Yeah. God, that'd be great to do on you. In 20 years' time, Scott, you will be Dr. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 10. <laughs> now, um, you, you do help quite a lot of, of famous people, don't you? Yes. Um, I like you... to, I'm very shallow, you see. If a, if a famous person rings me and says, would you, I come out, yeah, Yes, come over now. Right. So, yeah. Does that happen a lot? Yeah, well, it does. Ring yeah, yeah, supermodels, actors, uh, uh, and yeah, it's great. I mean, it's one of the great things about my job is I get to meet and then drive mad 
all kinds of celebrities. Mm. You know, at the end of a of a session, sometimes I say, "Now, sorry, I know we finished hypnosis. I must now Get ask you." Out. Yeah, sorry. Tell me. <laughs> <what>. <laughs> but you know, I, I actually I never charge anyone for therapy. I never have. I ask them to give some money to charity because life's been very good to me in other ways. So I I, I, I do that. But then I do drive them mad. I say, oh, "Come, on, tell me about the stories." You know, when your band was on the road, or you know that sort of thing. It's right. great. Wow. So you get good stories out of them. Oh, you, you spoke to. Um, um, David Williams before his channel swim, didn't you? Yes, I, I did hypnotise da- David. So for two things, firstly to override the pain because there's you know it's it's takes a, a lot of energy. It's very stressful, but also but his nipples to, really are. He, his <laughs> his I think were yeah very very mm. actually very red. But but um, but actually to also make the time pass quicker. So you can distort time. You can make it seem like it's... Because it was 10 hours and make yeah. it seem like it's going a lot quicker. And what he did was he, he replayed as he was swimming all kinds of great moments from movies that he loved and great moments from his life. So, so the time went much more quickly. Wow. And, and, and did he get back in touch and say, yes, it worked for me? Oh, God, yeah. He, uh, he did it in, in record time. He swam the channel. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah, he said that it definitely helped. Yeah. Now, Laura, you didn't have a session with Paul before. No, you did. You, you, I was there. Yeah. She was yeah. in a boat by the side of him. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was, like, yeah. it was like she was doing it with him. <laughs> Yeah. Really was, but I'm <laughs> mentally stronger, I think. Do you think? David. Yeah. <laughs> you should have gone, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe in the future, if he decides yeah. to do it again. You, you, want, you want to do it? Yeah. Well, I'll call on you if I sit in a boat uh, again. I'm you could do it the time you know passing that. quicker thing, couldn't yes. you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going the boat. <laughs> Here's the thing, Paul. Yeah. Could you sort Brittany out? Do you know, I, I, in all honesty, I think probably not, because I don't think she wants to be sorted. I think um, I don't think she's ready for that yet. Mm. You know, and and I mean, I know it is. It's great fodder for comedy, but it's also kind of sad and tragic. I mean, I when you look at her and you, you just, it's just tragic seeing how it's all fallen apart. Don't you think? I mean, uh, I just yeah, I I, I feel you know te- terrible for her when I look at it. But when she is ready, you'll be right there. Oh God, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. As, as soon as that phone rings, the opportunity yeah. to you know, get the stories out. All that paparazzi. stories. Because because you'll be around the corner. You're moving to Los Angeles, aren't you? In fact, I live um, I, I live next door to where she used to live. So right. one of her, I think one of her bodyguards lives there now. But where she used to live with Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Wow. But I'm glad I didn't live next door to her because there's pa- there's absolute this it's just it's a sea of paparazzi you don't want to live there now do you no 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 so i mean you've got this new is it a new house i have yeah just moved to los angeles yeah okay um five bedrooms four bathrooms four garages four garages four god he wouldn't go that he was still on radio one would he (laughs) (laughs) says you with your west wing and your east yeah whatever um (laughs) and your name one of your neighbors is Brittany murphy is it yeah Apparently, yeah. God, that's good. Have you not <laughs> popped round with the neighbours yet? Well, do you Hello, know, that, I'm a new neighbour. The, the houses are not very, it's not like Coronation Street. They're not very close <laughs> not together. Not close together. They're You've probably got big old apart. gates there, haven't you, Paul? We, you're bloody <laughs> right, we have. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, <the> security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And um, you, you've got a new uh, show starting in America, don't you? I have, yeah. I've just signed a three-year deal. I'm, I'm moving to America. And I'm very excited about it. Uh, Los Angeles is, look, it's a town of ruthless overachievers. You know, it's like going to Lourdes for me. It's fantastic. So I'm, I'm really looking <laughs> forward like to it. Do you like it, though? Because it is full I of love people. It. Mm. I love it. And do, well, do you know, at the moment, it's absolutely full of Brits. You know, if you turn on the television, you've got Simon Cowell, Gordon Ramsay, Piers Morgan, Cat Dealey, you know, and, just, and, and all behind the cameras, you've got tons of Brits as well. You've got David Beckham, Robbie Williams. Also, you just, everywhere, you, you know, it's tons of really great British people everywhere. Are they your new friends now in Los Angeles? Uh, some of them, yes. Yeah. Wow. It's great, isn't it? Love You're it. just thinking about the future, aren't you? Uh, You're wondering how you can go from Radio 1 to... I know how you're thinking, how you can go from Radio 1 to LA. I've crossed my mind. You know, I'm a dreamer. This is a podcast from BBC Radio 1. The Scott Mills Daily. Hello. Hello, who's that? It's Victoria. Hi, Victoria. Where are you today? I'm in Sheffield. That's nice. Uh, how can I help? Um, I've just thought that the Impa Loompa idea, maybe you could send one round to Rebecca for her uh, missing, Darren missing her birthday. Oh, yeah, to make up for Darren missing her, her, her big day. That yeah. is a, that's a great idea. I think so, because I think it would sort all the problems out. Well, it worked for Craig David. Yeah, definitely. You know, he got the girl. Maybe that's, maybe that's right. Maybe that's what we should have done. So, yeah. Rebecca's just sat at home, door goes, and then the Umpers come on. 
I was hoping for the Impa Loompa music then. No, it's, ta- it's taken a while for the front door to open. Oh, hang on. It's my big door. Yeah. It's the West Wing, see? You know, so. it takes a while. I know. Oh, let me just... Let me just mm, mm. Have, you, have, you, have you got to the front door hang yet? Hang on, hang on. Oh. It's, just, it's, the, it's the bottom lock. Loompa dee doo. I've got a perfect puzzle for you. I like it. Oompa, loompa, loompa dee dee. If you are wise, you'll listen to me. Quite a lot of uh, people that have been out with Craig David are now on, saying, well, various ways in which he's charmed them. Okay, can I just... Uh, he I, is a big romantic. Uh, as far as I'm aware, they didn't do just that generic Oompa Loompa song. I think it was a personal, <laughs> personalised message. Oh, right, they didn't But just... I don't know what the personalised message is yet. I'm going to try and find out. Can you out. find out? I'm going to try and find that out. That is a hot break, Craig, mm. Craig David breaking news story. I like it. Yeah. Um, now, how else has he wooed them? I can't say at the moment. Oh. I'm just doing my research. Okay. I'll get back to you. <laughs> but it is great if it's true. I'm just waiting for the girls to get back to me. Okay. So um, we heard from Darren. Uh, he's messed up because he forgot Rebecca, his girlfriend's birthday. Girls hate that. Now I don't have his number because he was on email, but I've got Rebecca's number. We should have sent around the umpa loompa, but we didn't. In fact, what we did was a lot more lame than that. Vodafone voicemail service for oh, number. Please leave a message after the tone. Here's a message from Darren. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Right. Happy birthday, dear Rebecca. Happy birthday to you. Is that you being Marilyn Monroe? Well, I thought I thought it was it was Mr. It was, President. I thought it was going to be Marilyn Mar- Monroe, but it was a bit Kermit-esque, really, wasn't it? Tell you kind what, of though. like a breathy Kermit. There's any ladies driving home now that would have got them right going? Oh, they'll oh, be waving all over the road. Blimey. And then I, I'm left a message for Rebecca as well. It was equally good. This is the Vodafone voicemail service for O six. Please leave a message after the tone. Happy birthday! <laughs> Hi Rebecca, it's Scott Mills here from Radio 1 and this is a special message from me and Laura to wish you a very happy birthday! Happy birthday! Your boyfriend Darren, he feels so sorry that you forgot your birthday he won't do it again and he loves you very much and he's asked me to give you this special message Happy birthday! Happy birthday! See, after that message that we left I think it'll be all back on between uh, Darren and Rebecca now Why are you playing Wham? I really couldn't find anything else party music wise. Uh, oh, Wham was okay. the only thing that I had in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll be back on now, definitely. Was well, that was that as embarrassing as when they stand on the chairs and sing Happy Birthday to you at TGI Fridays? It's kind of the same, isn't it? BBC Radio One podcast. Paul McKenna is with us. Hello. Hello. Now, um, Laura's got a question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Paul. Hello, Laura. <laughs> now, you've got a wife, haven't you? No. 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 I'm single. Oh, oh are you? Yeah. I, I, oh, I recently no. split with my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Now that changes it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but In what uh-huh. way? Surely you could get any woman yeah. Yeah. that Anyone. you would like. Just well, do you know, know people, people say this to me. They ask me if I use my powers to mm. seduce women. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I always say, no, look, I want... I want to help people. I want to help people with their problems. And, and besides, you know, I want to help people quit smoking and lose weight and those sorts of things. And, uh, you know, besides, obviously, there are lots of women who, you know, are mad keen on me, mostly <laughs> fat smokers. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I have that as well, and I can't even help anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's that about? Now, yeah. I've been asking my boyfriend, James, yeah. to marry me. Yeah. M- almost every day because it is now, a leap year yeah. so it's allowed yeah. yeah is there any way that you could mm. give me a few tips mm. that i could just try on him when i go you don't know because i you're actually speaking to the most rubbish person at relationships <laughs> you know oh. that's the that's the thing I, 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 my publishers keep saying have said to me can you do a book on relationships it's a big category but i think you haven't you done have, that one man, have you no but if i, I could stay rich confident fun 
non-smoker, but, but not relationships. I, I know, if I could stay in a relationship, I'd be able to do a book on it. So, no. Mm. But, uh, so, well, no. I, can, I can tell you this much. Mm. This is what I do know, yeah. is that um, people, um, everyone's got their own preference, um, their, their own, if you like, uh, uh, love preference. Like, for example, some people think in pictures, some people think in sounds, and some people think predominantly this is in feelings. Right. So somebody who's, who's visually oriented, um, they like a present, right? They like to see something. Right. Somebody who's auditory, like myself, they need to be told that, that I love you, yeah? Mm. And, a, and a kinesthetic, a feeling person, you have to touch them when you tell them I love you, yeah? Right. So somebody who's visual, you know, he, so what, what would your boyfriend be? Is he like, does he prefer picture, sounds, or feeling? He likes presents. Yeah, you go. So, hey, visual. How do you know? Huh? <laughs> I've, I've seen what she's going to buy him for his birthday. Oh, right. I could wrap myself up in a big bow, tell him I love him, and then touch him a bit. That's, no, yeah, cover all, cover yeah, all we, bases. Which one is he? Which one is he? Uh, all three, I think. Oh. Or yeah. does it have to be one or two? Well, we, we are all three, but we prefer one. Like, for example, um, if I ask you, uh, just, just tell me a bit about yourself. What, what do you like? Do you do you like to get a present? Do yeah. you like to be yeah. told by somebody that they love you? She's well, been asking me to, to buy her some really expensive shoes for the last six months. <laughs> you're not my boyfriend, though. Shut oh, yeah. up. Um, still ask. Yeah, like... no, no, you're visual. Oh. Look, look where your think? eyes moved. Yeah, yeah, your eyes, they moved up. So you can tell yeah. he is yeah. like a super. I think, she was more, I think she was more rolling them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so you can tell that. Yeah, you like a present, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with a present. <laughs> All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Watch, yeah. watch where his eyes move. If he, they move up. He's making pictures. If they move to the side, his sounds move down. He's into feelings. Right. And then how do I get him to marry me from that? Well, you see, that's a bit of a push, that is. <laughs> yeah? I'm, just, I'm just getting you into the sort of the stages of the... Uh, right. uh, one step at a time. Uh, yeah, one step at a time. And look, it's quite a I'm not the process, expert. It's process, isn't yeah. it, really? I think, do you know what you should do? Maybe um, ask one of his mates. Uh, might be, he might be able to tell you where he stands. Well, you know? I really yeah. fancy him. Can you get him to marry me? Yeah, do it that way. That, that always works. So and, bri and bribe him as well. <laughs> it's excellent. Thanks very much. Yeah. I think Laura's a bit disappointed because she did book you on the premise that you would be able to get James to marry her. I know. But, you know, hey, I know, I you know. know. Well, all right, bring him round. All right, yeah. and I'll say, look into my eyes, look into my eyes. <laughs> You're under. When you wake up, you'll want to marry Laura. Yeah. You'll feel obsessed with her. That'd She'll be, be everything that you want. And woman, three, two, one, you're back in the room. <laughs> Will that do? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> Could you <laughs> hypnotise our listeners to make sure they listen every day? Well, I think they do anyway, Scott. I mean, well. frankly, what's the competition, mm -hmm. eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you say know? that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. So that's yeah. a no. It's going on. <laughs> it's going on, isn't it? I mean, this show is a happening show, isn't it? Well, I listen to this show. Do you? Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to hear the popular beat combos that the young people of today are listening to. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your thing that you're kind of doing most at the moment? It's make you thin, right? Yeah, it's make you thin. The I've just um, I, I've uh, updated my thin book and re-released re it in it, and I'm very proud to say it's number one on the book charts at the moment. And uh, uh, it's a it's something I feel very passionate about. It's not just a commercial venture. It's for me, it's a, uh, a real passion to help people lose weight. Something I an area I feel I've made a big breakthrough in. And and now I'm, that's how what did I'm you gonna... how did you find that? How did you discover that? Well, I, I studied people that were overweight and people that, that were naturally thin and figured out the difference wasn't really to do with the food because, you know, if people are overweight, are always trying to change, trying to lose weight by changing the food. One week it'll be carbohydrates, then it'll be all about cabbage, and then it'll be all about... And, and, you know, what they do is they lose weight in the short term, but they put it back on again. And I realised it's, it's... Because thin people eat chocolate, cheese, chips mm. and pizza, but they just don't eat it to excess. So it's not the food, but it's the way we think about the food and the way we behave around it. All of our decisions about what we eat, when we eat, and how much we eat take place in our minds. Our mind's a bit like a computer. And what I have developed is a way of reprogramming it. So I studied people that were naturally thin, and I found out they think differently about food and about themselves to people that are overweight, and they behave a bit differently. They eat slower, generally. You know, people that are overweight think about food all day long, except when they're eating it, and then they shovel the food in their mouths as fast as they can, like they're in a race. And because they're going so fast, they can't hear the signal from their tummies that says they're full. So I get them to slow their eating speed down and make little changes like that that have a big effect over time. Yeah. And so, I mean, I come from a family where nearly everyone's overweight, and, you know... Are they all thin now? No, oh. that's the thing. Well, my, mother, my mother's not overweight, right. but yeah. No, 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 no. And, but, you know, I'd also be told, I was, you know, it's like being in the, the thin plate, uh, the clean plate club is w what I would call it. My mum and dad would say to me, come along, eat up. You know, there's, there's starving children in various parts of the world. And I would say, well, 
me being overweight doesn't help them really does it mm. you know if i want to leave some food let me leave it you know and and they would say there's no need to be like that and i'd say well i'm sorry i am like that i was born like that i'm i'm cantankerous you know yeah. so basically from my cantankerousness um and curiosity about human beings came this uh, system this breakthrough can you someone can you do fear of flying as well because i can, yeah. couldn't get on a plane for years yeah 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 absolutely fear, fear, fear of flying has become much um, more prevalent now since 9 11 and uh, and it's it's actually very it, you know it's, it's very straightforward fear to do right. are you still scared of flying um if there's turbulence i do get a bit of a, a twinge and not in a good way i can i can pray for the plane to bounce i don't what yeah pray for the plane to bounce put the seat belt stone back on um but uh, i can get on a plane but it's not my favorite at all no well it's very easy and um, i'm just uh I, I, you know, I've been I've been working on phobias for a long time. Most I listen to all the noises. Like, oh, what's that? Oh, the wings fell off. That's what I think in my head. That, that's. Do you, do you know what Chris Moyles told me? And oh, this is so funny. He said when he gets on a plane, uh, he looks around to see what other celebrities are sitting there. So he thinks, if the plane crashes, would it be? Radio One DJ Chris Moyles died. What kind of plane is he taking? Private ones? <laughs> well, I've never had a celebrity on the plane. He, he goes left. In first class. You oh, yeah, of course. And, yeah. And, and yeah. He, he says if he sees another celebrity, say, say he sees, I don't know, Harrison Ford, it would be Harrison Ford dying in a plane. Also on board yeah. was Radio One <laughs> DJ. And that's his biggest fear. He's going to be also on board. <laughs> <laughs> or someone might upstage him. Yes. <laughs> in that's, death. In death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Listen, um, Paul, thank you very much for coming in today. Scott, it's such a pleasure. It's lovely to meet you. And and uh, I, I listen to the show. I'm a fan, so it's a pleasure to be here. There are a couple of thin, non-smoking women who've texted in saying they like you. Do you want those Fantastic. texts? Yeah, yeah. That's right. get them printed yeah, off. Yeah, it's right. just, just, just do a phone in on those. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you. The Scott Mills Daily Radio One Radio One Podcast. Hello. Hello. Who's that? It's Beck. I just have to say that is probably one of the most disturbing things I've ever heard. What? Him playing Wham? No, 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 no. You chappers with that message. It moved a lot of people um, mm. on 81199. In a good way. Well, I have to say that my name's Rebecca, and if I got a message on my voicemail like that, I would. It was make me well. just listen to it as it was. It right. was. Ugh. You didn't find it hot in any way. Um, not in the slightest. A, sorry. Girl, a girl called Hannah sicked up her Jaffa cake that she was eating. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't meant I to be the quite, effect. I could quite relate to that, actually. Yeah. Just oh, hold thank, on a minute. Thank God you were having your tea, eh? Oh yes, thank goodness for that. Happy birthday. No, stop it, now! <laughs> What's more scary? Okay, that, or... They're coming to get you, Barbara. Chappers. Okay, what's scarier? Chappers, or the kid from last week's show doing it? They're coming to get you, Barbara. <laughs> hmm? Um, Chappers, I'm yeah. afraid, okay. sorry. Yeah, I thought that might be the answer <laughs> you gave. Hello, Scott. Hello, who's that? It's Thomas. How can I help you today? Well, I'd just like to say that I love Chappers' message. Oh, in what way? I would, lo I would love to get a message like that on my phone. In what way did you like it? Uh, oh, it got me going. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you mind? Obviously, it doesn't take much. <laughs> Happy birthday. Stop it, man. Is it, is it grossing you out now? Is your message? Happy birthday to you. Right, we've got some more of this. Craig David. Hey, what's up? I'm Craig David. It's breaking Craig David news on Radio 1. Who'd have thought this had been even more popular than breaking Britney Spears news? Much more exciting, isn't it? Right, so we revealed earlier. What was the story again that you know, Chopper? That he, uh, in a way to woo a, uh, a lady, he uh, sent a singing Oompa Loompa telegram round to I her. I didn't know you could get them. To her. No, I didn't. I, would, I wouldn't even know the first idea how to go about getting one. But he sent... Rent an Oompa Loompa dot com, presumably. You do know a little bit about well, no, I mean um, that. Anyhow, he sent a singing Oompa Loompa telegram <laughs> round to um, her and her mum's house. Uh, with a specially composed uh, tune, I'm led to believe, about how much he liked her. And that worked. Right. There's another girl that's been on. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's sat at home watching TV. Mm. Right. Right, imagine I'm the girl. Okay. Minding my own business. All right. Yeah. Watching a bit of TV. Oh, there goes the door. I'm going to have to stop watching my favourite show, which is on at the moment. I wouldn't have had you down as liking this. Oh my God! 
It's Craig David, right? Hmm. Then, okay, he's in a limo, right? Right. Filled with balloons as well, the limousine, and his music playing on the stereo. Fair enough. Yeah. Get you in the mood. And he takes her to Pizza Express, his favourite restaurant, and he was the nicest person ever. Brilliant. There you are. So he puts in a bit of effort to to sort yeah. of impress her, and then takes her to somewhere that you know isn't showing. So you've got so an not showing off. You've got umpa lumpa, and now you've got a, a, a limo filled with balloons. That's romantic, isn't it? And a pizza. Good work on the Pizza Express as well. His favourite restaurant. They're good, aren't they? Yeah. Apart from at seven o'clock on a Saturday evening. Why? What's wrong with them? Well, the one that doesn't speak had a bad experience, but I mean, a lot of restaurants are busy on a Saturday evening at seven o'clock, so you can't really blame Pizza Express for that. What happened was they forgot to put the chicken on his wife's pizza. <laughs> Is that all? Yeah. Right. You know, but you know. <laughs> you know. I wouldn't hold that against The lady too that doesn't much. speak wasn't happy at all. <laughs> she was they not. just had, both had to sit in silence. Yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Radio 1 Podcast. Radio 1 Podcast. <laughs> That was the Scott Mills Daily. Why not try the best of Chris Moyles? Available now to download for free at bbc.co.uk slash radio one.